In this video, I will show you how to dual boot Arch Linux with Windows 11 using Arch install script. This method is opposite to the manual one and is very easy to install Arch Linux alongside Windows 11 on the same drive. This guide has been newly updated and is one of the safest methods for dual booting on any computer without risk of data loss. However, it's recommended to back up important files to the cloud or an external drive. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to safely remove Arch Linux from the dual boot. Be sure to watch the video until the end to avoid any confusion. Check the description below for valuable information, timestamps, and download links. The only requirements of this video, you need Windows 11 or Windows 10 installed on your PC or laptop an 8 gigs or higher USB drive to create a bootable USB disk with Arch Linux, at least 40 GB of free space reserved from your existing drive. Now let's proceed with creating a free space for Arch Linux. Open the search bar and type diskmgmt to access the disk manager, which shows all of the connected drives along with their partitions. In my case, you can see that one drive is connected. If you notice, Drive 0 has three partitions. The first one is the EFI partition where the Windows bootloader is present. The second one is the main Windows. And the last one is the recovery partition. I'm going to choose the C drive to shrink the free space for Arch Linux. In your case, it might be D, E, or F, whatever. Just choose the partition and right click on it. Now choose shrink volume and allocate a minimum of 40 GB or more for Arch Linux. We can type the value in megabytes. In my case, I'm going to allocate 200,000 megabytes. Click on shrink. This will create an unallocated free space. That's it. Now we're done creating a free space for Arch Linux. Now open your favorite browser and go to the official website of Arch Linux. Now scroll down and choose the closest mirror to your location, then download the Arch Linux ISO. Once it's done, connect your USB stick to your computer. You can use Rufus to burn the downloaded ISO to the USB drive. Once you're done making a bootable USB with Rufus or pasting the ISO to the Ventoy drive, it's recommended to create a system restore point before installing Arch Linux. This option allows you to take a snapshot of the current state of the Windows system. If something goes wrong with the Arch installation, you can use this backup to restore your system to normal. Now reboot your computer. While it's rebooting, enter the BIOS settings using the keyboard shortcut based on your motherboard. Now mostly it could be F2, F9 or escape key. In the UEFI BIOS, enable USB boot. And change the boot order by setting the USB drive as primary. Now disable secure boot, which is very important for Arch Linux to boot. Also, there's an option like Microsoft's third-party UEFI. Enable it. It's also better to clear any key search certificates after disabling the secure boot. Save the changes. No system will boot into Arch Linux from the USB drive. If it fails to boot, use the boot menu to load Arch install media. Now on your monitor, you will see a terminal expecting input. Please note that the mouse functionality is disabled, so you need to rely on the keyboard. Type this command to increase the size of the console. Press enter to execute the command. Before installing Arch Linux, if your computer is connected to the internet via ethernet, use the ping command to check the connection. If using built-in Wi-Fi support, use the IWCTL to connect to the internet. 
To use IWCTL, simply type IWCTL in the terminal to enter the IWD shell mode. Then type device list to see a list of network interfaces. Look for WLAN0 and then type station WLAN0 get networks to see the list of Wi Fi networks. Next, run the command station WLAN0 connect and enter the name of your Wi Fi network. Then press the return key and input the Wi Fi password. After entering the password, wait for 5 seconds and press enter to connect to the internet. You might not see any output, but if the connection was successful, you can exit the IWD mode. That's it, you have successfully connected to the internet. Now run the ping command to ensure you're receiving the packets. To demonstrate this video easily, I have remotely logged into Arch Linux via SSH. Now type this command to synchronize the package databases. Then install the Arch Linux keyring and Arch install packages by executing these commands one after the other. Now type lsplk to list out all drives connected to the PC. In this case, you can see the two main drives. Forget about the loops. Just concentrate on the SDA or NVMe. The NVMe 0N1 is the main drive where Windows 11 has been installed and the SDA is the bootable USB. It's time to create partitions for Arch Linux using the free space we created earlier. Type cfdisk space forward slash dev forward slash NVMe 0N1 and press enter. Here you can see the EFI and Windows partitions. Keep in mind that you need to use the arrow keys for selection and the enter key for confirmation. Now scroll to the free space. For Arch Linux, we need to create two main partitions, EFI and root. Then select the free space. I'm going to create the first partition with a size of one gig for the EFI partition and press the enter key to create it. Then select the type and choose EFI system. Then select the free space again and create a root partition of 20 GB or higher. In my case, I'm going to use the remaining free space. The type is going to be a Linux file system and the CF disk will pick it automatically. That's it, now we have done creating the partitions for Arch Linux. Now just remember these two disk identifiers, then write the changes to alter the disk. Once it's done, exit from the CF disk. Now if you type lsblk, you can see all the newly created partitions, the NVMe0N1P5 for EFI and P6 for root. We need to format these partitions one by one. First, format the Arch EFI partition, which in my case is NVMe0N1. P5 by typing this command. Then format the root partition, which in my case is NVMe0N1 P6 by typing this command. Now let's go ahead and mount the partitions. First, I'm gonna mount the root partition, which in my case is NVMe0N1 P6 to the MNT. Then create a directory inside the MNT and name it as boot. Now mount the EFI partition to this directory. Make sure all the partitions are mounted properly. You can verify it by typing lsb, okay? It's time to install the Arch Linux to the root partition which is mounted to forward slash MNT. So let's invoke the arch install script to automate everything for us. Just type arch install and press enter key. Now use the arrow keys to navigate through the options. Then set the system language by selecting your option. Then choose your locale. In my case, I'm going to leave the first three options at their default values. Then choose disk configuration. 
You can use manual partitioning to specify the mount points manually. In this particular case, we already have mounted the EFI and root partitions for Arch One X. So choose pre-mounted configuration and set the root directory for the mounted devices to forward slash MNT. Now this is where we have mounted the root partition of Arch Linux. Then press enter to confirm. Now if you highlight the disk configuration, you will notice the script recognizes the EFI and root partitions. Additionally, if you want to secure your installation with encryption, you can set an encryption password. Next, select the bootloader. You have the option to use either the systemd or the grub bootloader. I'm going to choose a grub. Then I will leave the swap value set to true and leave the hostname as Arch Linux. After that, set the root password to assign a password for the root user. Then create a new user account. You can even add the new user to the sudo words list for elevated privileges. It's time to install the desktop environment. To do so, select the profile option and choose desktop. The Arch install script offers a plethora of options to choose from. But for this demonstration, I will opt for the Plasma desktop environment. Next, select the graphic drivers that you want to install. If you have Intel iGPU, choose Intel Open Source and choose AMD if you have AMD GPU. If you have the latest NVIDIA graphics card, choose proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Otherwise, use the Nauvoo driver accordingly. Then select the audio option and choose the audio server. For best results on most computers, it's recommended to use Pipewire. If you wish, you can install additional kernels. But for now, I will stick to the default or the latest available kernel. Under the Additional Packages option, you can specify a list of tools to be installed separated by spaces. After that, select the Network Configuration and choose to use the Network Manager. Then select your time zone to set the correct time on your system. I'm going to prefer not to use any optional repositories that will break the installation. Now go ahead and check all the options and have not left anything blank. Once you have confirmed all the options, select the install option and press enter and wait for a few minutes for Arch Linux to be fully installed on your computer. The prompt to perform post-installation steps will appear once the installation has been completed. Select Yes to enter the chroot environment and start customizing your new Arch Linux installation. If I type LSBLK, you can see the boot and root partitions. It's time to install the grub bootloader, which is going to help boot Arch Linux. For some reason, Arch install script was not able to do that. So we need to manually install the grub bootloader once again. Now type this command to install these packages. Type lsblk. We're going to install grub into this partition named boot. Type the command exactly as it is. Now generate a grub configuration file by typing this command to update the grub configuration file. That's it, the grub bootloader has been installed. Now exit from the chroot environment. Once it's done, shut down the system by typing this command and eject the pen drive. That's it, now we have successfully installed Arch Linux and dual booted with Windows 11. Once the system is restarted, you can see the grub menu. 
from here you can boot into only arch for now and windows 11 is not showing we are going to fix that issue in a moment for now let's just boot into arch linux you can choose x11 or valen session from the login manager The first thing to do after installing Arch Linux is to fix the Discover app backend. To do so, open console and type this command install flatpak and use it as a backend for discovery. It's time to add the Windows boot entry to Grub menu. Edit the grub configuration file with this command and change the default grub timer to 30 seconds. Then scroll to the bottom and uncomment this line. If you don't set the OS proper value to false, then grub cannot look for the Windows bootloader and won't add it to the grub menu. Once it's done, save the changes by pressing Ctrl plus O and exit with Ctrl plus X. Then inside the terminal, type this command to install OS prober. Now run this command to update grub configuration and you can see it found the windows boot manager. Then reboot your system. Now you can see the grub menu to boot into Arch or Windows 11. As a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like Arch Linux and decided to uninstall, then reboot your computer. You need to boot into Windows 11. Once you're inside Windows 11, open the search bar and type Disk MGMT and open Disk Management Utility. Here in my case, next to the C drive, two new partitions are showing. We need to delete each partition one after the other. As you can see, I have deleted the root partition and there's no option to delete the boot EFI partition. That's expected. We're going to take a command prompt help to remove this partition. To do so, go ahead, open a command prompt and run as administrator. Inside the command prompt, type disk part, then type list disk. This will show all the drives connected to my PC. And as you can see, drive 0 is the only drive connected to my computer where Windows 11 are present. I'm going to go ahead and select this drive by typing select disk 0. Now I'm going to type this command list partition to view all partitions of the drive. If you notice carefully, partition 5 is the Arch EFI partition, which we failed to delete from the disk manager, which is this one. And as you can see, it's around 1000 megabytes or 1 gig. We're going to go ahead and delete this partition. To do so, type this command to select this partition. Make sure you have selected the proper partition. Then type delete partition override. And as you can see, under the disk manager, it's now deleted and we gain back free space. You can use this free space and merge it back to Windows 11. That's it, we have successfully removed Arch Linux. To restart your computer, you should boot your system into Windows 11 directly and you won't face any issues. This is how you properly set up a dual boot on your Windows 11 computer with Arch Linux using Arch install script. If you have any questions or queries, comment down below. I will try answering your questions. I will also leave a link to the detailed article about it. So please check the description down below. Thanks for watching. This has been KSQRL. I will see you in the next one.